welcome to the new episode of Heart to Heart. I'm Divya Atri and I love to bring art closer to the lives of people by being an art educator, a practicing artist, an art blogger and an art advisor. Today we are going to focus on Women Empowerment Month, the month of March. And we are very happy to introduce to you a contemporary woman artist who is also an art entrepreneur, Ms. Tina Rear. Hi, Tina. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. Sure. Tina, mm -hmm. can you tell us something about what started, what, how you started Scrap You and Artistry True? Sure. Um, well, interesting story. When I first started, we were just Scrap You. Um, I was teaching in Richmond in the elementary schools here in Hillsboro. I've been a Hillsboro resident for almost 20 years and um, loved working in the school system, especially when my youngest was in the, in the school. So I volunteered a lot and loved to scrapbook. So I started um, an enrichment program there teaching scrapbooking. And after probably the third year, um, and many students later, I kept being asked, do you have this as a business? Can you teach us at our birthday party? Um, and probably by the third year I caught on and said, yes, I do. Absolutely. Write your name on my mailing list sheet here and I'll give you a call with some pricing. And went home and started an LLC called Scrap You and started teaching out of my home and out in the community um, at the Hillsborough Rec and birthday parties and Cedar Hill Camp and so forth. So that's kind of how we started. And how many years has it been since then? We have been in business seven years, knock on wood, um, and we have grown from scrapbooking to, um, I hit a stale, point because we moved from my home into a small studio we started from the ground up in a basement less than 500 square feet um, and it worked for us it was great to get my feet wet and you know start breaking out into the art community here in Hillsboro I've always been um, a big volunteer in the community I think it's really important to give back to your community and um, so that's how I started doing it, basket auctions, you know, um, school functions and so forth. So um, we grew and people didn't want to just scrapbook anymore. Scrapbooking in and of itself is a dying art, although I love it. I love it. Just touching all that paper and all those colors. So, so maybe that was when you added artistry too? Exactly. So yeah, so over dinner with my sister, we decided that we were going to expand and I had to find a way to expand our name. We toyed with changing our name, but people knew Scrap You and it became kind of a funny joke when I would see my kids on the streets, they would go, Scrap You! And so it was kind of a fun little meme that we created and so I said, I have to add on. So we started toying with, if you're using different mediums, it's, it's artistry. And my sister came up with um, an artistry too. It kind of rhymes too. And it rhymes, so it just stuck. And um, it works, it works Wonderful. for us. And I think it's helped branch us out. Um, and I think the number one thing that helped pull us into more of a full service studio was our drawing and painting um, classes and the other mediums that we started to add slowly. So that's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. So Tina, tell me um, something about your journey as an entrepreneur. Were there any challenges that you faced uh, while doing all of this business? There's always challenges being a small business, I think. Um, and being in a large community that is populated with large businesses, it definitely is creates a challenge for um, small businesses and mom and pop shops to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the challenges here, unfortunately, is real estate is extremely expensive. Um, finding the right space that works with us, uh, for us rather, and being able to afford it has always been a challenge for us. Um, that's number one. Number two is, um, I would say, 
a lot of the small businesses in town have really started to dissipate and you see them um, being taken over by chains. Um, especially even in the art business now, there's multiple sip and paint chains and that's people the make the assumption that that's just what we do mm -hmm. and we do so much more. It's so much more personalized and community based. Um, and the other last thing I would say to that point is um, I think the arts is a um, it's a recreational process yes. for 90% mm -hmm. of um, children mm -hmm. in this area. Um, a lot of children focus heavily on sports or music or which is great and I think it's all part of the process for children but I think that um, the arts is lost sometimes. And that actually brings me to my next question is that how do you keep them motivated? How do you keep your students and your clients motivated to come back to your studio and have different kinds of experiences? Yeah, it uh, again, sometimes that can be a challenge. Um, often we, we try to tap into the market, especially for stay-at-home moms. Um, and that's been a big challenge for us and I'm not sure why and I have been trying to figure out how to pull those moms out of the house and say okay you know take an hour learn a trade we have amazing artists that are available during the daytime that can give ladies um, an opportunity senior citizens an opportunity to keeping them motivated I would say one of the things I'm slightly crazy so I, I'm silly, I 90% of the time, I'm being polite today and I'm wearing shoes for the interview, but 90% of the time, I don't wear shoes in the studio. The kids love that. It's a very down to earth, come as you are place and it's a safe space. So, so perhaps you give them a more fun experience completely. along with learning and being creative as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, I mean, you know, if they're not laughing and they're not enjoying um, who they are, it's going to be difficult to tap into their self-expression. Exactly. Um, you know, 90% of the blocks that children have are out of fear of failure mm -hmm. or fear that they can't or they don't know how. Yeah. And that's never the case. And honestly. so you, you do not encourage that, oh, this picture is pretty because that is not always true. No, it's, it's just not. Abstract art is amazing and kids start out in one um, medium or one type of function of their process and then they grow and they evolve it's amazing um, exactly. you know for example the painting behind us um, is from one of our 16 year old students um, we have a program called art with care where we do uh, special needs support for children um, with all types of uh, disabilities and challenges and so Andrew one of our students is an amazing painter and um, this impressionist painting, he, I, I, I'm just so impressed by and his work. That's absolutely true. Not yeah. only such artwork produces fulfillment in the student or the person who's making it, but also to the teachers absolutely. providing that platform. Yeah, absolutely. And we, um, I think, one of the main things is to teach children the disciplines and all the techniques within the process of drawing, painting, for example, or mixed media by allowing their personal style and allowing them to start and focus on something that interests them. Exactly. Especially with our younger, our littles, you know, they focus on someone to paint birds and dogs. And if you start with a, a concept that they're interested in and then show them how to hold the pencil, how to use the appropriate brush, they're gonna learn more and they're gonna grow more because it's already an interesting subject. Wonderful. So Tina, please talk to us about the kind of services you provide to the students and the clients in the studio. Sure. Well, um, our day-to-day -day function runs on our drawing, painting, and our sewing program. We do private lessons and small group lessons. Um, they're usually purchased in an eight-pack. Kids come in, they're taught by mostly certified um, art teachers in the school system. Some are self um, proclaimed artists that have been to art school that are just amazing teachers. Um, so that is um, a function of what we do on almost a daily basis in the evenings. Kids can sign up and take drawing, they can take painting, they can do sewing classes. We teach um, mixed media classes for children where they learn a variety of different mediums to decide what they're most interested in. 
Um, we do a lot of weekend workshops and ladies night out. Um, paint and sips, you know, yes, we do that, but we go above and beyond. We're doing watercolor tiling. We're making bracelets and jewelry. We're doing soap making. Um, we have a multitude of programs, not only for adults date nights, but for mom and me and or open studio time where they want to come and paint ceramics or just do something. We create um, individual programs all the time for families because mostly they're busy and they don't know in advance if they can make six weeks or eight weeks. So we allow them the flexibility and the creativity to design their own project. Maybe it's one time, maybe it's four weeks. Um, another big thing we do is birthday parties. We customize birthday parties from the ground up theme based um, projects can be incorporated a variety of different things all the way from preschool to um, teens we've done a lot of adult and teen parties here that have been very successful um, and i lastly i think the thing that i'm most proud of um, is our school's day out camp we're open whenever school is closed most of the somerset county area we try to follow all of their school system um, days off and we offer before care and after care it's a great opportunity for kids to come and spend the day and learn about a variety of different art mediums um, and lastly our summer camp we have become extremely diversified in our summer camp program this year we're doing eight weeks of camp last year we did four and we sold out and this year we're doing eight and we have uh, amazing certified teachers and artists that are going to be running our program. We're teaching specialty camps in airbrush, um, soap and bath bomb making, sewing. Um, we have a specialty teen art program this year, um, before and after care, and pizza. Lots of pizza. So Wow. So talking about um, school and teenagers, yeah. as we all know that Children these days go through so much of uh, mental pressure and stress that they deal have, they have to deal with. Um, so have you thought about art, offering art as therapy to them? And have you looked at it into this, uh, in, this, in this way? And I'm sure you're doing things related to that as well. So uh, especially during the off season when the schools are not open, right. um, do you feel that students come to you uh, keeping that in mind? I, I, yes, I say the answer is yes. I've had a lot of regular students, um, regulars that come back to me every year in summer camp, their siblings, and I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I've created a safe space. Um, that That's is very important. That's it's very important. important. That's you know, like I said, I, you know, we kick off our shoes, the kids, we play music, everybody's got their own space, and we have a zero bullying policy and that is the first thing that I say every morning to every group of students that I have this is your team this is your safe space um, this is the group of kids that are going to support you um, art is a community process there's no such thing as copying in yeah. art um, that if somebody likes what you're doing share it with them teach them how to do it we rely a lot on each other to help. If somebody needs help, my first go-to is ask your neighbor, look how great they've done. Exactly. It's really important. Um, we've had a lot of children with ADHD um, who have been depressed, who don't want to be in that hustle, bustle, large camp environment. We're very small, we're very close-knit, and I am very proud of the relationships that have been created as a result of camp. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's important. I, um, I try as much as I can to do as much in the community to support that. So if, that's, if there's a need, I do. You I provide. That, right? Yeah. We, I worked with Safe and Sound Somerset, mm -hmm. the domestic violence shelter here in Hillsborough, and I provided... Um, I provided art in their safe house for their uh, families and the children in the safe house. It was a great, rewarding experience. And that's so, another way to reach out back and to the community, basically. <clears throat> Absolutely. I think it's critical if you live in this community and you own a business in this community that you find a way to give back. Give back. Let's talk about um, sustainability of art. Mm -hmm. In today's time and age where everybody is in a digital world, how do we bring arts to 
the value that it should have, bringing it sustainable, continuous, and a place where people actually go and connect with themselves? Uh, well, as soon as you figure that out, let me know, because that's a challenge. Um, <laughs> I, so obviously my personal opinion is I think art is amazing and it needs to be part of everybody's life in some way, shape or form. Um, you know, the great thing is, is that for kids, one of the things that I always used to teach to my students a lot is that scrapbooking, painting, drawing, you're doing that every day in school anyway, when you're creating posters or presentations. And art is all around you. It's just learning some really fun and funky techniques that you can add to even your schoolwork. Right. Um, I think because it's an elective, you know, considered right. an elective right. and not a must have yes. for people in, in a lot of their lifestyles, mm -hmm. Um, it's a challenge. Um, I try to bring art to the community at a reasonable cost um, so that more people can experience it. it. Make it affordable. Right. But um, again, going back to um, the franchises that are, you know, have, have started to blossom here and the kids and families being so busy, um, it's trying to create time um, in everybody's schedule, you know, that how many people are going to see this and they say, you know, oh, I, I would love to go, but I can never find the time exactly. in my schedule. Uh, you know, the classes never work for me. I've been dying to go there. Right. I hear that all the time, mm -hmm. um, which is why one of the reasons we created the DIY open studio, because we can try our best to work around you. Mm -hmm. It's funny. One of the questions that I get asked all the time is what are your hours? <laughs> you know, an artist doesn't really set hours per se. Right. You try to be available. We have obviously have nights that we're open because we have classes, but we try to be as flexible as possible and create the message that if you're interested, you reach out to us and we'll make it work for you. Um, I think that's really, really important. And coming back to when I started, um, I think personally that there will be a time and there will be time very soon when going inwards connecting to yourself through music, art, and other visual art or, or other forms of art will be the way going forward for the humans because we're always seeking things which are outside. Yeah. So going inside will be a good balance. And for that, arts is really, really important. I agree. And you know, the one tip I used to give to some of my kids that are very screen oriented, we don't allow screens in the studio. Um, unless it's for uh, looking up a specific project, project if they weren't yeah. able to paint it or mm -hmm. print it, um, and during camp um, in aftercare or before right. care. But um, one of the things that I've um, we bring to the table is well, we, we created a space, because we have a TV, and everybody's always asking, oh, can we watch a movie? And I said, yeah, we can watch an art movie. Yeah. So we watch um, documentaries or um, YouTube videos about Jackson Pollock right. and you know, all famous artists, and then we do breakdown videos of how to create caricatures, and the kids will be, it's amazing to watch them sit there right. from six years old all the way through to age 13 at the end of the day with the lights low with a piece of paper, and they're trying, or a painting, and they're trying to copy this artist and learning a little bit about art, art history as well completely right it's it's amazing and their parents are like I, how did you know about this about this person exactly right. exactly so yeah we try to do it that way I think that's important good Tina my last question for you to will be can you give some inspirational uh, thoughts to any women or women entrepreneur who's looking at you and wants to do something like this or women in general Sure. So the first thing I, I would say um, to women in general is if you want to do something, don't let anybody stop you. Um, reach out to people who have what you want or are willing to support you and move you forward uh, to your goals. And if it's art, if it's teaching art, if it's being part of the art community, come visit me because you always have a place here. That's number one. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for um, some very specific friends that have helped me. My dear friend Marianne, 
who created my website and my store online. It takes a village, just like it does to raise a child. And I, anybody who has a business will tell you that you can't do it alone. Um, value people and tell them that you appreciate them. I think that's also really important, especially for artists. Um, there's always self-doubt sometimes with art. Um, and I think I would say to anybody who's got children um, interested in art is bring them, you know, let them explore just like they explored track or basketball or dance. And um, even if it isn't their primary focus, make it a family affair. It's a lot of fun. We do a lot of great things and you can create pieces that will be in your home forever and you can use as a family art piece and family conversation or a history of where you have been or what you've done together. Um, those things last forever, those memories. That's true. Uh, families, bring your kids, explore the arts, try something new. Being a family and creating a project that will stay in your home forever, it'll be an heirloom. It could be a piece of art that talks about your family history, a scrapbook album that records where you've been together, a painting um, of that trip to the beach. Try it as a family. It's, a, it's an amazing bonding experience and you, uh, you'll have fun and you'll laugh because we have fun here. Uh, Tina, this place looks very inviting. I see many interesting art pieces here. Can you talk to us a little bit about what these creations are? Sure. Um, the first one here is a watercolor tile that is being taught by two adults. It's The class is coming up soon and it's being taught by one of our artists, Mary Ann. Um, the clay is also being taught by Mary Ann. We have an adult program and a children's program. The Monster. The Monster. We actually have a lot of kids registered for that. I think we're going to sell out very soon. That's, and that's going to cool. be, yeah, that'll be on a weekend and the kids will have a chance to really create their own monster and come back for free to paint it at their leisure or take it home to let it dry and do whatever they will with it. Um, the adult sculpture is going to be a lot of fun. They're going to learn how to create the body and contour and then um, create this kind of abstract person, which I, I fell in love with and I saw it. Um, same concept, they'll be able to come back and paint it if they want to, and then we will glaze it. What about this bottle over here? So this is uh, a really fun, actually very simple creation. Um, this is alcohol ink process, and it's basically mm -hmm. just dripping the alcohol ink onto a bottle. Um, the fairy lights are an option to add to your bottle if you choose to. Um, and we've actually bought some brand new pieces that are amazing that we're going to be glazing in that um, in that way. And you could see when you blend yeah. the certain colors together. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. And I'm, cool. I'm so excited about that. Pretty decorative. Yeah, that'll be a more of an adult class. But yeah. we do do smaller things like that for children in our summer camp. Um, this is actually a fun one. This is called a graffiti poster. Um, we're doing this with an artist named Gabby. She is in school, if she's in art school currently, and she's amazing. She's created all of these individual shape templates, um, but she inspires you to start with two or three ziggly lines through your piece and then connect different lines throughout. And if you so go like abstract with the different shapes abstract. and lines. There's nothing wrong or right about it. You start right. to color them in, you use um, colored pencils, you use markers, and then you just create layer over layer. And it's great because if you don't think you have drawing ability, this is what I something created. Something will definitely come out Somebody of it. Comes, yes. Something always comes out of it. And that's a weekend workshop coming up on a Sunday. Um, very cool. Yeah, we're very excited. We have um, something that I'm becoming a little more proficient in now is our acrylic pouring. Um, that we've been doing for adult programs. There's a variety of different pour processes and it takes a long time to cure and dry so people mostly come back for their piece. But we have a ladies night set up to learn what's called a Dutch pour and um, that's coming up very soon. Always a good opportunity for ladies to bring 
food and wine and hang out and have a nice ladies night out it's a great medium and that usually leads to we teach um, resin art resin jewelry art making and a variety of different other poor mediums thank you tina so much for this wonderful heart to heart conversation my pleasure it was great listening to your ideas your tenacity to keep working and doing what you believe in was very inspiring and very amazing thank you um that was it for us from today uh, stay tuned for the next episode of heart to heart coming soon in the month of april <music>